the Rock of Gibraltar. Standing at the entrance of the Mediterranean is a monolith of limestone. At 426 meters, it rises majestically over the straits. In the present day, Gibraltar is a flourishing modern city with a population of 30,000 coming and going, living their daily lives. Unbeknownst to many, a vast and complex group of caves crisscrosses the inside of the rock, formed over millennia by the elements that have battered the mighty stone. With 214 officially recorded sites, Gibraltar has one of the highest concentrations of caves in the world for its size. Full of intrigue, wonder and natural beauty, these natural hollows offer an opening to another way of seeing the rock, an underground Gibraltar. Throughout its history, Gibraltar has been settled by many different peoples and cultures. First by the Neanderthals, and then much later by modern humans during the Neolithic and Bronze Age periods. In more recent history, the rock was first settled by Muslims from North Africa in 711 AD. In 1462, Gibraltar fell to the Kingdom of Castile in the Christian Reconquista of Iberia. It most famously fell to a joint Anglo-Dutch fleet in 1704, which sees Gibraltar under British rule to this very day. Evidence of all these periods in the rock's history can be found deep inside Gibraltar's caves, many of which have been used by people since the time of the Neanderthals. On the western slopes of the rock, speleologist Nicholas Ferrari of the Gibraltar Museum Caving Unit leads the descent to Bray's Cave. Several archaeological excavations led by the Gibraltar Museum at Bray's Cave between 1997 and 2003 have unearthed fascinating information about how people have used this cave over time. So we're looking at um, here some material which we've excavated from Bray's Cave, which is on the western side of the rock. Uh, most of our caves with archaeology and paleontology are on the eastern side, so this is quite unusual. It's near the top of the rock. And we've been excavating there for number of years and there are two distinct periods when that cave is used by people very interesting and the first period goes back about um, 3,000 years ago roughly and maybe slightly less it's the Bronze Age and the cave at that point we think was closed it's now an open rock shelter it's eroded away and it probably had a small opening and it seems that the people of that time uh, the Bronze Age were using the cave for burials we found six individuals, uh, humans, buried in the cave, and with them the artifacts that were laid to rest with them as part of the burial process and the burial ritual. Most of them are artifacts such as this. Um, these are the remains of, you see some of them have been pieced together by us, of vessels of pottery. Remember, these are hunting, gathering people with some element of farming into them, so they're probably uh, people that are living on the rock and off the rock. And this is the kind of material that was possessions for them and they were placing them um, as part of their, their ritual of, of burial. There's some interesting aspects to the human remains um, that have been found there, some of which we don't fully understand. But one of the things that we found were three the skull caps placed one on top of the other in some kind of ritualistic um, burial. I'm not quite sure what, what it was for. So that's the early part of, of Bray's cave. But the cave then opens up and becomes more or less what it looks like today, a rock shelter. And it opens up as a process of natural erosion, earthquakes, collapses. So the, the, what is the, the cliff side of the cave opens up and you end up with this kind of rock shelter.
the place is then occupied by a goat herd, curiously, and we're talking now of the 14th century, so it's quite recent. And the goat herd belonged to a, um, a North African dynasty that controls the rock at the time, and that is the Marinid dynasty. They, they take Gibraltar in 1333 uh, from the Christians. The period is best known for urban structures and military structures like the Tower of Homage, the galley house in casements, or the Moorish baths here in, in, in the museum. But what Bray's has given us is a, a social dimension, if you like, the the day-to-day -day life of people, not just the military aspects of life in Gibraltar in the 14th century. Because what we found there was that the shelter was used by, by a goat herd. We found the remains of, of the goats and a lot of the, the daily wear that the, the goat herd was using. Things like this, bowls, you can see this is now beautifully glazed using the wheel, finished than the earlier Bronze Age material. So we have things like that which have been used for eating. Some for which we have particular names uh, known for, for their Arabic names. Um, this is um, an ataifo, which you can see is beautifully decorated. Here's the rim of the ataifo. And this would be a large central dish where food is put and, and people can commonly eat uh, from it. We've also found this is an uh, atarfe. This is essentially a, a portable oven. This would be approximately like this with the top. And you'd light it here and you have your bowl for cooking. So this is another object from that. So you can imagine the goat herd is taking this with him, um, lighting a fire, maybe cooking himself a meal and eating it. Another interesting one here, which is a lovely little bead, beautifully decorated, it's got a hole there. So it's a personal object that the, the goat herd had, that was probably wearing at some point. To set the Marinid goat herd in context, the Marinid dynasty, North African, uh, takes Gibraltar in 1333 from the Christians. They come to help their brethren from Granada, the Nazarids, the famous Nazarids of the Alhambra. And they come to regain the territory that has been lost. They then settle in Gibraltar. They take over the whole of this territory as far as Ronda. From Ronda this way towards, you know, the, the, the North Africa is theirs and this area belongs to them. So there is, if you like, a kind of rivalry with, with the brethren who brought them over from, from Granada for a while. They hold Gibraltar until 1374, and then they lose it to the Granada Muslims once again. It is a period of construction. It's really the period when the city of Gibraltar takes off. For the first time, the Marinids under the Emir Abu Hassan um, create a wall, defensive wall along the sea, along the coast, all the way to Europa Point. And it's from that time then, because they've protected the whole of the peninsula of Gibraltar, that the city of Gibraltar expands away from the area of casements and the castle um, from that protection. So that's why we find, for example, here in the museum, the, the baths, clearly an area which was related with sources of fresh water. Uh, and it's from here that we see the expansion of this city, which is described by some chroniclers as a beautiful Medina, a lovely city, the city of victory, to commemorate this recapture from the Christians. So the goat herd on the upper rock is living in an expanding city of Gibraltar, the first time the city of Gibraltar is expanding. And in a period of relative peace, the Christians have been pushed out of Gibraltar, the, the frontier has been pushed back, and the whole of this area, all the way to Granada, is under Muslim rule, albeit by different dynasties. So, Bray's, in many ways, gives us uh, insights into life in Gibraltar in two very distinct periods. One is an early one, thousands of years ago, before possibly even the arrival of, of the first cultures from the east, like the Phoenicians, uh, of hunter-gatherers and farmers living on the upper rock and, and having ritualistic burials within a cave. And then, thousands of years later, that life is forgotten. Those burials are covered by sediment the cave opens up into a rock shelter and a North African goat herd, maybe Gibraltarian by then, born here perhaps, is using the site as a place where he shelters, he has his goats around him, and he cooks his meals, but, all, but he also carries some of his little personal objects with him.